Okay, here we are, volume 15, black and white. I have to say I have made this bead um, five times now, and I am about to like lose my freaking mind. It's a peanut shaped bead, um, black and white, of course. And I really hope it comes out this time or I am going to flip my wig. It's gotta happen. This is like a really cool bead. I don't know, sometimes I like to make things that I normally haven't made in a while or haven't made before um, for the Scottwood Research Channel. But this one is just getting the best of me and I can't let that happen. All the fingers, everything crossed. <laughs> and let's see what happens. Thanks for watching you guys and sticking with me um, on my little glass working journey. We'll see you next time. Take care. Yeah, it sure did take me a while to get this one down. So. The way we're gonna start this bead is so simple. It's actually a really simple bead to make. It's just very, very time consuming just to get to the point of having a pattern. So basically I have my bit of white glass and I bring it into a teardrop shape. And you can make sure that that teardrop is a little on the longer side because now that it's cool enough, we're gonna add black in the exact same way we added the white. Add as much as you need and then heat that black up and let it evenly fall down into the same shape as the other side. And you can mess with that for a while. Like here, I feel like I needed a little extra glass. And just that alone is a really cool looking bee. But no, I have to take it further. I'm telling you, I took this bead so far, it was insane. Right now I'm flattening down the white part, just the white part. I give it a nice even heat and you see me continue to press it down until I have it as flat as I can get it. And then I just give it a little shape there. And from there, I am going to flatten down the black. And the reason why I do it this way instead of flattening them both out, which I have done in the past, is because I feel like I can get a much more control over how flat both sides are getting. It just seemed easier that way. All right. So now we're gonna add a huge glob of glass, of the white glass on top of the black glass. But we want this like a really nice, perfect seal. So I'm gonna spend quite a bit of time using my knife and just gently pushing it a little at a time to the edge of that flatness that I have from the black. Don't overheat it. You just want to keep that white a little hotter than the black so you can move it and not be moving the black. Get what I'm saying? <laughs> I hope. And then I just do. I spend a little bit of time. I want everything to be nice and smooth before I move on. And I'm just going to get a little bit of extra white where I think I need it using a stringer. I do want it to kind of touch the other white right in the center there and this is where I'm going to zip up the sides because I want the white to appear as close to the mandrel as possible so it looks like a half and half half and half And I do this slowly. I'll put one side on and I really take my time on where the stringer is going. And then I'll just take the time to heat that one bit up 
and get it into shape. Of course, the whole time I am heating the other side of the bead up and keeping everything, you know, warm. Any of these little areas just fill in. And really, that's what you're looking for. I'm looking for just a nice, nice black and white on both sides. Okay, now let's do exactly the same thing, but using black. You get a big wad. Just push it right on there as much as you can. I'm using two 10 millimeter rods. They're pretty big. And then the black will heat up really nice so you can like push it right down onto the edge of that white. I don't know what it is about these colors. They're just so dreamy to work with. I just love the crispness that the lines give you using this black and white. Okay, so let's zip up this other side. And okay, honestly, I don't do like a perfect job, but these are handmade beads. You know, imperfections are just part of the job. I mean, obviously you wanna be perfect, yeah. Okay, we're all perfectionists here, I'm sure. <laughs> <clears throat> but I do my best to get it as close as I can possibly get it, and then I move on. Just pulling in that little bit of black right into that tight, tight area. It's more like an hourglass shape than a peanut shape. All right, now we have our bead accomplished. You can stop there and be like happy, 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 but of course, you know me, I have to continue on with a pattern. And I had a very specific pattern in mind for this, but for some reason, it just every single time I made the bead, the pattern just was not coming out exactly how I wanted it to be. And that's why I had to make so many of these. The initial shape took time to get to, but it's not hard. The crappy part is, is that when you add all of your detail and design and you look at it and you're like, this sucks. And then you have to start all over again. But I really think that this one came out to my mind's liking. I guess we'll put it that way. I do like the way this one came out because I really just wanted pattern on the two edges. Cascading back and forth. Dots, dots, dots. You know how I am about the dots. And this is a neat little part here because I feel like after I looked at it, there were these little tiny cups holding the other colors. And I just thought that looked really cool. But also I'm, I'm getting to the point now in my head where it's like this has to be over with quickly before I overdo my pattern. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to avoid here. So we're getting really close to the end. I'm so glad this bead came out. Oh my god, you guys. All right, here's the finale. I just needed something a little extra here. And I am so glad that you guys were with me to see this. <laughs> I'm so glad you were able, to, you were my witness to a, a bead that I'm, I'm really happy with. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you next time.